All right, guys, we are live. Thank you for watching episode 208 of the Shooter's Mindset tonight. Joining me, co-host Jennifer Seymour. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Star of the hour, Kita Bussy is joining us. What's going on, Kita? Hey. What's up? We've got a, a, lot, a lot of stuff to talk about with her. she got a training company out, upcoming book coming out. A lot of people seem to be looking forward to all this. She seems to be very knowledgeable in the game. So we're going to talk to her throughout the show. Remember, if you got any live questions throughout the show, and you want to use the Facebook side of things, go to the Shooter's Mindset on Facebook. There's a post that just went up. If you want to comment below that post, we'll get any questions uh, live to Kita throughout the show. If you're watching on the YouTube side of thing, and I believe in the top right-hand corner here, you can join the conversation there. I'll be screening those, and we'll get those questions out throughout the show. All right? Show sponsors here. Folks over at Tactical Shit, shop.tacticalshit.com for all your tactical shit needs. And the folks over at Gear Nation USA, apparel company that's being sold exclusively through the Shooter's Mindset uh, shop. That's the shootersmindset.com forward slash shop. We got a couple new, we got one really big shirt. We got like three, four shirt designs there. Uh, the latest ones, uh, what is it? Everyday Gun Day shirts. I got to do a lot of uploading on my end to get the sweaters and stuff like that up there as well. So check them out. Uh, we talked about Q&A, the shootersmindset.com. We talked briefly about the shop, blog articles, and to keep up with the latest episodes of the Shooters Mindset, you can do so all at the shootersmindset.com. All right. All right, let's uh, jump into this one here. For those who are unfamiliar with Yakita, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I'm a total foodie. I like expensive wine. Oh, wait, that's not what you meant, is it? <laughs> yeah, you can throw that in there. <laughs> no, no. Expensive wine. <laughs> uh, I like shooting and fitness. So um, basically, I grew up in a household with no guns. My family just didn't really shoot. They didn't really have any exposure to it, and I didn't either until I joined the Army when I was 17. I uh, had a U.S. Weapons Day at Fort Sill, loved it. And when I got out, I hadn't ever shot a pistol, so wanted to learn how to do that. Went to a few USPSA matches and just watched. Uh, really liked it. Shot a few here and there. And just last summer started seriously getting into competition, taking it seriously in training. Uh, and right. now I'm coaching movement classes. Well, I've been doing that for six years, is coaching movement for USPSA shooters. There you go. So six years out there training now you're doing your kind of your own thing and people are loving you right you got classes kind of booked all over the place right now right all over the place yeah <laughs> awesome awesome stuff i mean for so tell us a little bit more about your training company here for people who are more interested maybe want to book a class uh what what's it called and where can we find more information it's called 180 firearms training you can go on facebook and search 180 firearms training or you can go to my Facebook page as Kita Bussy. You can email me at 180firearmstraining at gmail.com or message me on Facebook. Boom, oh, there you go. And Jen, you just got off of uh, doing some training yourself, right? How'd that go? Yeah, we taught an intro to competitive shooting class here uh, locally. I think we had like 22 students, something like that. So it was, it was a good time. They, they just soaked up everything that we taught them. So we did like classroom in the morning going over the rules of USPSA. A lot of this was people that had never competed at all or, you know, done any type of competitive shooting. So we taught them, you know, some rules about USPSA, a little bit about 3 gun, but mainly just pistol, USPSA and steel challenge. And then ate lunch and then went out on the range and had like mock stages that they could do more than once to kind of figure it out. And, you know, they would shoot the stage and we would um, one person would walk with them as they shot, and then we'd pull them aside and give them pointers, and then they could do it again. So it was good. I think we got a lot of good feedback. I think they enjoyed it. We got a lot of people addicted to it. So That's super cool. How long How long was the class for? About eight hours. Awesome. And it was pretty much people who haven't shot a gun before, right? Oh, they've oh. shot guns, but they had not ever really shot competitively. Um, mm. A couple of them were older guys that were like, I used to shoot competitively 25 years ago but I haven't done it since then and I want to get back into it and one guy had a revolver and man he was tearing it up with a revolver it was awesome there we go awesome stuff we've got a couple of folks over at uh tactical shit sent me over heckler appreciate you coming in and joining us here 
Um, what else we got here? The folks, uh, you got an upcoming book, right, Kita? That's coming out. It seems to be a lot of people are very ancient, eight, anxiously waiting to get it. Uh, any details on the new book? Yeah, I am talking about Explosive Movement. Um, oh, it's called Smart Move. It's a book on efficient movement for shooters in the shooting sports. It talks about footwork, a few drills, um, something called movement in the third dimension, and energy leaks. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the energy leaks, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure. Talk as much as you want. All right. So this, this is difficult to explain in a book, but I'm going to do it. Um, energy leaks are, <clears throat> say, well, let's say I'm going to take this straw, and this is not the bendy end. If I'm going to dab this into this book, I'm putting force through the straw into the book. And then where does the force go from there? If I'm applying force into the book, the force is coming back into the straw, right? Right. So if I flip that around to the bendy end and I go like this, am I going to get the same amount of force back going like this as I am going like this? No. No. The force is going to, some of it's going to go back into the straw, but a lot of it is going to leak out right here through the bendy part. So in the human body, we have a lot of parts like that that bend, and we can lose energy that way. So when you're trying to be explosive in your movement and you're applying force to the ground, you want to get as much of that force back as you can. And if you have an energy leak, you're not going to get all of that force back. One of the places I see this a lot, actually I can show you. Let's see. You have a barrel start where your gun is starting on a barrel and you have to get to it and your start position is two steps back. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you fine. <laughs> okay. Your start position is two back two steps back from a barrel. And you want to get to that gun. You'll see a lot of people will go like this and grab the gun. And I just created an energy leak right here. On my back if you're reaching for the gun and then you have to stand up again and then move it's going to be a lot faster to instead use your legs these big muscles to get you to the gun and then go makes sense it's much more efficient to move that way all right so you can also kind of bring that to people kind of going to point a to point b they're taking off with kind of all they got, and then they're taking a super hard plant at point B, right? Yes, I've seen that. Yeah, there's usually, I think I've, I've probably done that, just super take off with all I got, running as fast as I can, and then either I'm either off balance going to point B, or I'm just like planning so hard to stop because I'm moving so fast. Um, yeah. So, some of that stuff is obviously in the book, and that's stuff that you are also training when people book a class. So your classes are focused on, is it more focused than anything on movement only and with a mixture of marksmanship, or how's that training class is going? It's focused on movement, but we do. it's a two-day class. We do shoot at the, about 1,000 rounds only because you move differently when you're shooting. If you were just dry firing and running around, you're not going to move the same way as if you had live ammo in your gun. So it is a shooting class, but right. we're focused on movement. Is there any like classroom time? Because uh, obviously I've trained a couple people. Obviously day one is usually maybe one or two hours, maybe four hours, depending on what you're taking. No, it's all on the range. Um, I have done a little bit of classroom for inclement weather. Right. We just drills indoors and things like that right yeah i mean some of in my experience training with some folks um and you know obviously competition style training but there wasn't a lot of like stages involved in some of them right and this could be a good or bad thing depending on what you take from the class but we got a lot of you know shooting at targets like you got maybe 12 students you have 12 targets set up and we're shooting we're shooting we're shooting but there's not much actually stages set up 
right? Is that something that you're focusing on in yours? I do set up stages. I set up at least two stages, depending on how much time we end up with. Um, sometimes it'll be three. So we break it down into drills and then put it all together into a stage to see, you know, so they can take a drill and incorporate it into a stage. And then at the end, a lot of times I'll build a third stage that they haven't been shooting routinely that they can, you know, test themselves and see if they're applying it. I think oh. movement is really important. Like one of the things I said in that class, and I'm by no means the best shooter in the world, never will be. I just don't have the time to put into it with working kids. But I said, I think that the majority of my improvement has not necessarily been that I can shoot more accurately. The majority of my improvement has been learning how to move more efficiently, um, learning how to reload on the move. And I mean, it, I told them, I, I just told them they need to dry fire and they need to dry fire movement at home and that get really, really comfortable and be able, being able to transition. And I think that you can shave off seconds a lot faster with that. You know, you've got to look at the economy of movement. Is it better for you to try and move and shoot at the same time? Or are you better at plant, run and plant? Like me, a lot of times I'm faster to plant and then book it and then plant and get you know, a lot of targets from one position. Obviously, if it's only one target, you've got to move and shoot. But if I can, you know, plan out spots, you know, three spots to shoot from and I can move really fast in between them, for me, that's more efficient, but it might not be for everybody. And that's what I told him. I said, you've got to play with it and see what's more efficient for you and learn how to move. I'm sure I still have a ton to learn about moving, but I do think what improvement I have made has been mostly from learning to move more comfortably and faster and more efficiently. I think once you get your basic gun handling skills down, movement is the lowest hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the biggest way you can shave off time. I'll often see students shave off three seconds or more and the best shooters in the world will maybe shave off a second. There you go, but a second, so that's huge in the game that we play. So, I mean, you're, you're seeing student coming in their first run by the end of the class, they shaved probably three seconds off that stage or in general, at that's, least seconds. That, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty significant. And in itself can be worth the class. If you can shave three, even, you know, whether you're a local match shooter or, you know, shooting, trying to win a national championship or whatever it is. Three seconds is big to get you on top. Here we have the the humble the humble marksman says Kita helped my movement tremendously back in April. So someone who's already taken the class. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So some conversation just going on there. Sounds like this is an awesome class from some comments in the live feed. Any live on your engine, or we're pretty clear there. Let me look again. No. I don't think <clears throat> there's any yet. There we go. Head over to Facebook, show Jen some love in the comment section over there, all right? That's right. Y'all don't want to talk to Anthony. I'm prettier than he is. <laughs> Indeed. So let's see. Uh, what do we have? When can we expect this book uh, to be released? If, is there any date? I don't have a specific date. I'm hoping it'll be done by the end of spring. I still need to get all the pictures taken and get my diagrams put into a computerized form. <laughs> And then do all the layout. So and when those are the most painstaking yeah. parts, I think. And when it's out, I mean, how many hours do you say? Just curious. I mean, I never wrote a book before. And how many hours do you say you've got into this uh, book of yours? <laughs> Six years worth. <laughs> there you go. There you Honestly, go. the book kind of wrote itself because I've said everything in it over and over so many times in classes that it just kind of poured out. There it is. And then I had to go back and find all my sources. <laughs> there you go. Is the book going to be available on uh, through the Facebook website or you have a website, uh, Amazon, where would it be available, you know? it's. I'm going to publish it on Create Space. It will be available on Amazon as well. Oh, but there we go. I'll get a bigger cut from Create Space. <laughs> yeah, Amazon. I know the Amazon fees can be pretty tough on that. Right. Crazy stuff. Um, as far as far as uh, booking any classes with you, go to 180 Firearms Facebook, uh, 180 Firearms Training on Facebook. Go to the event, go down to events, and they can kind of figure that out there. Yes. 
Okay. Um, do you have, have any upcoming classes you would like to kind of talk about or any openings in upcoming classes? I think I might have an opening left in, in my Pennsylvania class next month. That's at an indoor range. Um, the following month I have Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. And I think they all have some slots left. And your your amount of students you like to have everybody all instructors kind of have their number is like twelve the max ten the max what do you what kind of number of students you working with twelve is the max I forgot to mention uh, Mesquite lot in the Las Vegas area I also have a class coming up right twelve is the max any kind of limit to their kind of uh, skill level because I know some folks would say oh well I don't want to you know, too much C-class shooters or D-class shooters will kind of impede on the one-on-one -on -one for some of the higher level guys or whatever. Is there any kind of restrictions for that? I really don't think it does because everyone goes through their rotation and everyone gets the same amount of time. As long okay. as they're safe and they've shot at least one match and they know, you know, how to move around with a gun without hurting anyone, they're welcome to join the class. Fair enough. And we had a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a pre-chat uh, conversation. Um, I don't know. I know. I don't. I don't know if this ever been brought up or whatever. But someone obviously, you said you're a B cap B class shooter in USPSA. Someone who's on a GM level and thinks that they can't really learn much from a B class or C class shooter. What do you have to say to those kind of folks? I say, even Tiger Woods had a coach, and his coach is no Tiger Woods. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we, we, we've had this kind of conversation on the show, I don't know what episodes, but throughout episodes, that uh, some folks can be the best shooter in the world, but not the best teacher in the world, right? Some folks just can't tell you or train you on how to get to their level or better, right? Right. So it really, you want to find that the best coach or best teacher and kind of go from there, right? There we go. Uh Jen, any any uh, anything you want to add to the topic as far as uh, have you who have you trained under by the way have you trained under anybody I don't think we ever had this conversation I don't think I've taken a formal class uh, I took a three gun class from the Mikulix like in 2014 when I was first starting um, with my schedule there haven't been any classes really out where I'm at um, that I could get to so I haven't taken a um, formal class I've done more go to matches and be the annoying leech to the person that's good and just watch everything that they do and try and soak it up. Um, I, you know, to, we were talking about it after our class on Saturday. I'm by no means, like I said, the best shooter in the world. And what? You're, like seventh, you're like seventh. Oh, seventh shut late. up, Anthony. <laughs> but I do it for fun and I love getting people involved. Like, I don't think I would ever teach an advanced class, but I love getting people involved and, and teaching them. And there's so many people that I've shot with that because I've gone off and shot some of the um, matches with some of the pros and I've picked up a lot of pointers and there's a lot of things that my brain probably knows, but it doesn't necessarily translate and right. I've passed it on to people and then now they're beating me because they actually practice. <laughs> um, and I'm like, yeah, I taught you everything you know, but anyway, but I am, I think that you can be better at teaching than necessarily doing like I know a lot of things and I can translate them to other people and and say you need to you know economy of movement you need to do this faster you need to do this and and they can go home and practice it and do it and do well so I do think that there is some value in some people that are not necessarily grandmasters and I think that there are people that can teach like I said I'm not teaching grandmasters either I'm teaching beginners and getting them going but I've had multiple people that I've taught how to shoot competitively that are now smoking people so oh. and you probably have a good eye when you're watching people too you can see what they're doing and critique and it's hard to do that for yourself even with video you almost need someone else there to watch you and critique you yep right. that's hard to find so what are some of the what are some of the obstacles being a female shooter in a male dominated sport? <laughs> <laughs> we talked a little bit about this before the show. Uh, sorting out who legitimately wants to take a class and learn from the creepers on social media is definitely a challenge. <laughs> right. 
And I can imagine, I mean, obviously, you know, being in some of the local matches, they'll, sh you know, there's not very many, but when they do show up, it's like they've, you know, depending on their level also, but I've seen some pretty good female shooters on, even on the local level. And it seems like they know they bombed it, but everybody's just cheering them on all the guys in the background. Like, yeah, yeah they're awesome. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, she just fucking exploded on that stage. Dude, she, you know, it's, so can you give us some valuable pointers that are really cheering That's not the friends I have. I get off of a stage that I bomb, and my friends are like, Jen, what the hell just happened? And I'm like, well, those, just don't yeah. talk to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Are, give yeah, me some space. <laughs> no, it's just like the new, you know, the new girl shooter that comes to the club. No one really knows her. And yeah. there's some obviously good behind that. Obviously, they're not, they don't want her to feel bad. They want her to come back, you know, and keep shooting the game, but... Um, I think I've seen sometimes where they, they lack to give valuable pointers because she's just a lady shooter and they just don't want to say anything mean or think they're saying anything mean in general. I think yeah. even as far as like, try, like Kita, if you teach, I don't know about um, if it's like this for you and you're more well known as far as being a teacher. So it may not be, but like if I'm shooting a match and somebody's there that's kind of newer or whatever, and I'll see them just like, do some things I'm like oh my god this is such a good shooter if he would just do these few things like if he would just watch his plan out his foot plants instead of trying to like you know figure out where he needs to stand on the clock if he'd figure that out he could have like killed everybody on that stage and so I want to give advice but it's you never know how it's received being the girl and talking to a guy and I've had some that are like oh thank you so much and I've had some that are like you can tell they're just bothered that a girl corrected them. And so I've gotten now to where I go up and I'm like, do you, do you want some pointers? And if they're like, no, I'm good. I'm like, all right, fine. I want to say, keep sucking. I don't care. Um, but it's so, it's kind of an odd place. I feel like they take advice better from other guys than, than from the girl. I try not to give unsolicited advice if I can help it, unless it's someone I'm good friends with. Uh, I try to keep my mouth shut, but it's really hard sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I would hope someone would tell me, except if it's during a match, then I just won't say anything. If someone comes and asks me something, then I'll say something. But match time is not time for critiques. Maybe after the fact, when they're all done, if they want to ask me, then that's fine. Yeah. yeah, the one I'm thinking about, this, this fella, I mean, I waited until after it, and I said, I said, you're really a great shooter. Um, but one thing that could like really boost you is if you would just do this one thing, just plan out where you're going to put your feet before you ever. And it, it, it's one of those that had a bunch of barrels and hidden targets behind it. So you really had to, it was one of those that you had to plan out where you're going to stand at each one and what you're going to shoot from each one instead of trying to, you know, and, and he was like, Oh, okay. And that guy was like, thank you so much. But, it's and you never know. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. And it's, sometimes it's not as well received as, as others being a female. Yeah. I don't, sometimes it's not even well received when, you know, whether when it's a girl or a guy. Yeah. When I'm doing it. I mean, I, but I'm, t I tend to be the, you know, especially even at a local, it depends, but I know during a major match, I definitely very quiet. Cause I just don't, I can get sucked into a conversation really easy and start laughing. And the RO is like, dude, shut it. And then I'm not really paying attention. My mind's not on the stage. And we're just having a conversation, shooting shit. I got a new Glock 34. It's awesome, man. You know, you got this on this and on it. And then, then it's like, you're in the hole or you're on deck. And I'm like, holy shit, what am I supposed to do here? I went over it during the walkthrough and now I'm totally lost. You know? So I tend to be quiet. I tend to just focus focus yeah. on the stage and repeat that plan in my head over and over again, no matter how many people are kind of shooting it ahead of me, unless I mm -hmm. see something that's really like, Oh, that's kind of, you know, maybe I should, you if know, think about safe, then yeah, yeah. Then that's when I would say something. Right. And I don't want to yeah. get shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, talk I, don't know, I, suppose. I don't yeah. talk much at major matches. I don't think I would ever correct anybody at a major match. The yeah, ones I'm yeah. talking about are more local matches where you kind of know everybody kind of knows each other, and you're like. I try to be as quiet as possible in the local matches too, but I, you know, every, you know, you shoot with those guys every month, and then it's like a bunch of buddies getting together in the squad. <laughs> it never happens. So it's like now when I just explode on the stage, I was like, oh well, it's a local match, you know, whatever. I'm just here to have fun. At least that that's my attitude now. Um, before I used to, I used to. I was hard on myself, man. There was a couple, even at a local stage. I'm like, now I'm like five seconds from overall. Now I'm not, I have no shot. Let's just go home. 
and save the ammo. All right. I so I try to teach every match like it's a major match because I All want right. to practice getting in that headspace. Thanks. And well, the yeah. best I, can. I try that, but <laughs> there we go. Friends and gun talk, right? So uh, what do we have? The humble marksman says I was an A class shooter. He'd have helped me, and now I am M now. Uh, some conversation going on here. Michael says, I see a class May 3rd and May 4th in Augusta, Wyoming, I believe. Oh, What's Augusta, it? Wisconsin. Wisconsin, sorry. Uh, I thought you were about to say Augusta, Georgia. I was like, what? Because that's, okay. that's where I'm at. <laughs> and, then I'm, like, and, I, and then I'm, I'm kind of slow, and I don't know my state abbreviation, so that's kind of on my fault. <laughs> Uh, what is the, what is the cost of the class, and what do students need to bring for shooting hardware? The the cost the the cost of the class is always variable depending on the location and range fees and things like that. So this particular class is three hundred fifty dollars. It's a two day class, a thousand rounds of ammo. Bring a rig with a holster, at least five mag pouches. Uh, whatever division you shoot, good to have a backup gun. We shoot a lot of rounds. Plus, there's a lot of sand on that particular range, it's like beach sand. So bring a mag brush. There it is. And don't bring no pancake-style holsters out there, bros. <laughs> <laughs> no Uncle Mike holsters outside the waistband. Right. Um, no surface. Uh, being a junior shooter, people say what my stage plan should be all the time. But in reality, they miss. Uh, they can miss things too. This is from uh, Bryson Allen. Doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how good you are. There's always another way to look at it. Yeah. So there we go. Junior shooter kind of uh, setting his stage plan, and people trying to tell him how to shoot it. I'm sure that can happen with junior shooters too. People trying to coast the young guns up there, trying to give them a lot of advice, and sometimes that advice is shit. <laughs> so you got that's to... actually kind of the same thing that happens being a girl <laughs> there you go i'm uh, gonna move to the discount corner portion of the show here segment of the show jen start us off please you can get 10 percent off with carbon arms at carbonarms.us on their um, shell caddies with the code tsm10 they got in my opinion the best shotgun shell caddies um they have tubes for shotguns uh, AR-15 handguards, all kinds of stuff. So check them out. And the ratchet belt, which I love. Um, so they, you can get 10% off there. And then you can get 10% off at the Shooter's Mindset store with Gen TSM 10 And that'll get you 10% off there. We have all kinds of base pads and magazines, all kinds of stuff there. So go check it out. Is your uh, prime ammunition code still still up or that expired? I don't know if it is. We had 25% off of the slugs um, with prime ammunition. So you can try if you want. It's Gen 25, J-E-N 25, and you can get 25% off the slugs. So mm, if you go. try it, let me know if it's still active. We need a 50% discount code. I need some ammo, and I, oh I my just need gosh. 50% 9 millimeter or something. Right? You're going to have to start stripping for that kind of discount. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Uh, Kita, any discount codes on your end? Nope. <laughs> Although I was surprised. Uh, last time I got arm score ammo, they had nickel-plated brass. I was very pleasantly surprised by that. Wow. What is nickel pla is, was it, what's the thing with nickel-plated versus just standard brass? It's higher quality. Uh, you can reload it more times. There you go. I didn't know that. Interesting enough that I don't do a lot of reloading, so there you go. Discount codes <laughs> on my end. Uh, the folks over at shop.tacticalshit.com, TSM10, saves you 10% off anything on the website. Also good in the retail store over in St. Peter's, Missouri. I was told from having the folks over at Tactical Shit on last week to not yell it at the cashier, but we're going to tell you to yell it out at them anyway, save you 10%. Uh, That's only because they didn't want everybody to hear it. Yeah. There you go. Well, <laughs> Yell it, uh, yeah, screw it, yell it. Who cares? Everybody get 10% in the shop there uh, for their, who is in the sh retail store. Folks over at Dewey Rods, DeweyRods.com, TSM15 for 15% off the entire website over at Dewey Rods. Uh, TerranTacticalInnovations.com, uh, TSM10 will save you 10% off the entire website, even on gunsmithing, Benelli's, Glocks, all the gunsmithing parts over there if you want to send your gun in. 
Uh, folks over at UM Tactical, they got a lot of new holster lines. Uh, their holster lines kind of really amping up, beefing up. That's kind of new to their website. Check them out, umtactical.com, TSM10. will save you 10% off uh, website-wide on that. Uh, folks over at RANCOP, Mindset16 for 15% off, RANCOP.com. That's off the entire website, uh, last time I was told. Folks over at uh, Red Hill Tactical, so if you got a lot of... Uh, like the tank foes, the CZs, the open guns, those style of, you know, they, they really focus on the competitive shooting kind of holster. They usually get those holsters before anybody else, especially if it's a new gun and you want to rock that. Folks over at Red Hill Tactical, TSM 10 for 10% off there. All right. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, choosing the proper equipment. Uh, some of the discount codes here we mentioned, uh, obviously some equipment stuff. Proper equipment for you as a woman, what equipment have you found best works with your body style? So we talked about this a little bit before the show too. I used the um, double alpha belt and the inner belt on this one is really thin. So it doesn't dig into my hips so much. And then I have a dropped offset holster with the boss hanger it holds it off of my hips, so when I draw, it doesn't wiggle. So I don't bring the holster with it when I draw the gun. There you go. I mean, Jen, are you gonna? I think I want to send one over. Mm-hmm. You better find that one and send it to me because no, I'm I gonna try I it. I know where it's at. I'm looking at it over there. So we'll we'll take it off the belt and send you over. I believe it's. It could be the boss hanger. It's been a while since I've uh, thrown on that rig, but. I'll send it over, try it, because you always had an issue. Well, but th the thing is that three uh, and USPSA, no, you still do a lot of running. I don't know how how loose, you know, you run your holsters pretty tight because of the three gun stuff, but you can easily lose a gun running in USPSA the same way. So I don't think that really has anything to do with Usually it. Usually in USPSA, the gun's in your hand, but I suppose oh, yeah. there are situations I where you do have to reholster or you're running to a position and don't want to draw right away. I mean, there are odd situations. Yeah. They're, they're and I, run it, I run my holster a little looser in USPSA, but it's not like bouncing around. I still like it tightened down. And even with it like that, if I don't draw straight up, if my draw is a little weird, it will, um, the holster will move, which makes it yeah, harder it to get, you know? Out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You guys in the three gun games got to sometimes either run with a gun holster because you might be running to a shotgun or a rifle or you have to do a reholster of the pistol and then run. So, yeah, the whole, we've always we've seen videos of the gun kind of toppling out of some holster rigs for that. So but I'll send that over to you. Give it a try. Hopefully it speeds that up and whatever. We'll see with that. Uh, any other equipment stuff uh, gear talk that we have for this convo? Uh, you said a double alpha belts and boss hangers any holster that you prefer kita as far as um rig? just a drop do dropped off set it doesn't really matter On and as holster. far as the as far as the gun i tend to like a thicker grip that gives me something to hang on to to help manage recoil more there you go there we have it um all right and far we got some uh, physical fitness stuff you seem to be very big into physical fitness um yeah. do we need to be physically fit to improve that efficiency of movement, right? No. <laughs> well, do we need to really, if we want to see an improvement, all right, so let's say we're here working out, maybe I can just be a little bit faster. That makes sense, right, in some cases? All right, so here's the thing. A lot of times you'll see someone run through a stage and they're running like they have a gun in their hands. You know what I'm talking about, right? All right. Where if they were just running, they'd move a lot faster, but because they have a gun in their hands and they know they have a gun in their hands, they're moving very slowly and it's very awkward. So one way they can get better is just deciding they're gonna run. But even if you decide you're gonna run, yes, you're gonna be faster, but your muscles aren't going to be able to reach their maximum potential. So you actually have to, tr well, I have some drills for that that basically um, create neural pathways through your muscles that instantly can make you go faster. Dang. I need, I need to take a course. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I will I mean, say the the whole running with a gun in your hand. I think it probably took me like two solid years before I quit prancing. And yeah. it wasn't because I was trying to look pretty. It was because, oh, my God, there's a gun in my hand, you know. Well, and yeah. I mean, I felt comfortable with it, but I still subconsciously was like kind of prancing. I don't, I don't know. I, I may still do it a little bit. It took a long time to get to where I was comfortable enough with it in my hand to just run. Right. That's the thing. And then there's a, th there's a, you know, the, you know, don't want to get the cued, you know, you can't really run full blast like that. Like you would, you have something in your hand, you got to keep it pointed down range. Some people can find that angle weird. Uh, as far as what you teach, maybe would you recommend holding the gun pretty high? You recommend running one handed versus two handed, or that just depends on the scenario and the locations and stuff. Uh, it does depend on the scenario, but usually you want to pump your arms if you can and if it makes sense to to propel yourself and move faster there you go i think that's, that's one thing that took a long time to get comfortable enough to you know you have your grip and you don't you know but and now i think i break my grip every time i'm every time i move i break my grip almost um and i think that's something that newer shooters have a hard time like i'm like you can you can let go for a minute and and go back to it it's okay i have but a I mean, four step rule <laughs> If it's, un if it's four steps or less, then I'll keep my grip. If it's more yeah. than four steps, give or take, then I'll break the grip and pump my arms. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Because that make like I said, that, that makes just a little bit more sense. Because you're taking, if you're moving such short distance, you're taking your, your hand. Now you got to reestablish that grip and then, kind of, right. you know, come into it. So it's And then you can just snap the gun across to your next target mm -hmm. as you're moving. And you can start shooting a lot sooner. There we go. How did uh, how did you develop your technique or your teachings? So I have a degree in science and about, uh, I guess it's about eight years ago now, I went to my first USPSA match just to watch and I just kept going back and watching. And I was seeing how people were moving through the stages and thinking, well, that's not the most efficient way to move. Why are they moving like that? And I got curious and started researching movement in other sports. Um, and then basically through trial and error over about six years, maybe a little more, testing it on some very good shooters and seeing what works, what doesn't, and what's personal preference. There we go. Uh, fuck, uh, going to some of What was that? In other sports. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Keep cutting you off. No, you're, you're more important here. I'm just going through some of the chat here. I'm not I'm important. Sure. Peace. Peace. You're together. the guest of yeah. honor. Yes, you yeah. are. Yeah, who yeah, cares? No one wants to hear what I said. I'm just going to go in through the, the chat here and see what I want to ask you live. But go ahead, finish, your, finish what you got. So in other sports, there's the most efficient way to move, and it's already been researched and proven. So... A lot of those we can take and apply to USPSA, but the difference is they're not running around with a loaded gun in their hand. So there are certain ways that we can't move. Just because it's the most efficient proven way to move doesn't mean that we can do it. So then we have to figure out which ones we can. And then there are some things that apply to some situations and not others, like when you wanna focus on moving before you reload for a longer run. You want to focus on pushing out hard first and then shift your focus to the reload. But if you're only taking two steps, then your focus has to be on the reload first. You can't just focus on moving out explosively. And there you so go. Some... It applies some places and not others. There you go. The humble marksman says no blue bullets uh, discount code. Kita, all lowercase. There it is. We had one. Uh, folks over at Rumble Strip says Red Hill Tactical is the best. Shout out to my buddy Jen. Uh, let's see. Bryce, Red Hill Tactical, awesome level two holster for three gun. They are rock solid. Uh, Great Lakes Firearm Safety Training says, good to see you on the shows. You are, what are your shooting goals for 2018 and beyond? And what is your motivation for starting your training program? Um, my shooting goals. I'm shooting nationals for the first time this year, which I'm pretty excited about. Shooting some majors. Um, 
I actually went overseas just recently and plan to go back again to the Philippines this year for the Asia Pacific Championship 3. I went last year and it was a ton of fun. They had 12 stages per day over three days. Um, wow, and I that's actually, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot. It was cool though, because we didn't have to reset targets or anything. We each had our own range caddy. They carried our bags for us and everything. <laughs> it was kind oh of awesome. <laughs> okay, I want to go shoot that. <laughs> it was amazing. And I didn't even have ammo, and they just, it was hot off the press. They made it for, ArmScore provided it for me, and I thought that was really cool of them to do that. I just I was wondering how you get 36 stages worth of ammo over exactly. there. Exactly. I was like, I can't do this. They're not going to let me bring all of this. They're going to take it away. What do I do? Can I buy it when I get there? And they just gave it to me, which was super amazing. That's awesome. Ooh. Yeah. There you go. Shout out to ArmScore there. Um, so Rumble Strip says, yeah, Kita had the number one production shooter in the world of trial and error on her theories. Uh, it's from Rumble Strip. Uh, Leonard, Leonard says, uh, what are your thoughts on the drop step for shooting? What are your thoughts on the drop step? There are certain times where it's a good thing and certain times where it's a bad thing. So the drop step, if you don't know, it's when you take a step in the opposite direction of your destination, to propel yourself forward and gain momentum. And the times you want to do that is when you have no momentum. Like if you have a start position where your feet are together and you're totally static, um, then you might have to drop step to gain momentum. Or if you're falling out of a position or have a tough lean and you're all the way this way and then you have to go that way, then you can stick your foot out to push off. And shift your weight back in the direction you want to go. Other and than that, it's kind of a you kind of lose time because you're adding a step to your stage. Right. So those are the only scenarios that really it's helpful. Otherwise, if you're drop stepping everywhere, you're just losing time. Yes. Uh, what do we got here? When can we expect uh, Jen to return to Atlanta three gun? Bring Keto <laughs> along. Who just wrote that? I don't know. I can't, it's like one of those weird. <laughs> So I don't know. I might get there. I'm doing more traveling for PRS this year than anything, but um, I do want to get out there. I've said I want to go and shoot some more Atlanta three guns. So there I you should go. be out, I'll be out there at least one of them this year. Yeah. Prime ammunition shared some stuff. If you shooting some long gun recently, what were you shooting? That was just a practice kind of session. Yeah. That was just practicing with my new bolt gun, just trying to kind of figure it out and get it chronoed and, get my scope zeroed and kind of play around with it a little bit. I'm still getting used to a bolt. You know, I've never shot a bolt before, so there we go. it's different, but it's fun. Any upcoming goals, events, or matches that you want to talk about, Kita? Um, well, the ones that I just mentioned, um, nationals, um, I'm shooting area five, Wisconsin section, Minnesota dates aren't posted, but I do plan on shooting that if I'm available. Um, and then the match in Asia. Uh, next year is going to be the Australasians, so possibly that one for 2019. I think it's I think it's 2019, maybe early in the year. They don't have dates set yet for it. There that you one's already. Do you have any uh, specific kind of instructors or competitors that are your sources of inspiration? Maria Gushina, <laughs> she is my hero. If, if you don't know, Maria is a very young Russian girl um, living in a country where it's illegal to own a pistol. She has still managed to come in sixth in the world at the world shoot. Just recently, she took sixth place in production. Yeah, I forgot what episode we had her on. But we had her on probably like episode 23. We were fortunate enough to be affiliated with a company who got us in contact with her. I don't know what time. I think she jumped on the show. It was like 5, 4, 5 in the morning Russia time and our oh. time 9 p.m. Eastern. And she jumped on the show. Some language barrier, but it's an awesome show. I think you should 
go out there and watch it if you want to hear more of Maria's kind of thing. And I mean, I think she uses like a pellet gun or some type of airsoft style gun most of the time. That's pretty much identical to her to the to the rig that she uses. But still, I mean, at, she's at a kind of a, I would say a pretty significant disadvantage, and she's still able to pull six in the world. That's pretty pretty nuts. I think it's a matter of just a matter of time till she wins. Yeah. She tries hard. There we go. Yeah, she actually made a contribution to my book. I I had to cut my book off and break it into more than one, so it'll probably not be till the second book. But I, actually, there's something else I wanted to mention about her. When I was in Hungary at the Extreme Euro, um, she was in the shoot off. Oh, I think they called it something else. Um, the the Super Six. Maybe that's what it was called. Anyway, she took this risk that none of the other guys were willing to take on a mover. She did a sequence where she activated a, a mover that bobs up and down, going like down at a slant and then disappears behind a no shoot. And she took, I don't know, two or three targets in between shooting the mover, and she got all of her hits. And nobody else took the risk. That's awesome. She was willing to. That's I some aggressive shit I try to pull off and probably get a mic somewhere in that stage. Probably and she on knew that she could do it. Everyone was trying to talk her out of it, and she knew she could do it, and they almost talked her out of it, but she did it anyway, and she nailed it. And it was awesome to see. Go that is awesome. Home. Go big or go home. Do it for the YouTubes. That's what <laughs> I do. Like, I pull those aggressive moves out, and no one sees the hits, but it, uh, <laughs> it looks good. It cool on YouTube. <laughs> it looks good. And I felt good doing it. Uh, sometimes those don't pay off, but sometimes I like to play the game kind of aggressive. So if I can do, if I see something like that where I can kind of between a mover, between a swinger, or something like that, that I can take some other targets and still be able to pull it off, that's the way I usually go. That's like the first time that I was able to, in shotgun, shoot the popper that throws a clay up, shoot the popper, shoot something else, and then shoot the aerial. I was so proud of myself when I finally did it. Everybody yeah. else had already done it, but. I was proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like I was big stuff then. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's exciting when you have those small victories. There we go. Uh, this Some of the questions come from, uh, this from Leonard too. Is your training rooted in another sport or has your program been developed from the ground up? Um, I would say a lot of the techniques are already proven in other sports and I've taken what applied and thrown out what did not based on how you have to move around with a gun in your hands. I mean, this one was a two part question here. He says, what is unique about the shooting sports versus other sports when it comes to movement? Well, again, the way you have to move with a gun in your hand isn't the same as other sports. Uh, another thing too, for efficient movement in most other sports, they have, they stand with one foot slightly forward because it's a more steady base. You can move around a little more explosively, but in our sport, we have to have our feet like this, and usually there's a target array in between our toes, and we have to be facing our target array, so we can't have that really steady base with one foot slightly forward to shoot from, so we have a little bit of a disadvantage there, and we have to have a less optimal way of moving in the shooting sports. There you go, guys. Uh, you have any live on your end, Jen? We're good? I think I'm good on the YouTube side of things. Yep, I'm good. There's nothing. Good. All right. So right now there is no website for your training company, right? It's going all through Facebook and social media, Instagram kind of things, DM you, stuff like that. There's a website underway. It's not, it's not ready yet. Okay, there we go. So look forward to that. We will have a... Uh, Facebook link to 180 firearms training below this video. If you're not, wa if you're watching sometime when the live broadcast is off air, we'll have that. And we'll also kind of link that to the shooter's mindset, uh, Facebook page and stuff like that. So go over there, go under events, check it out. If you want to take a class, do so. Um, well, I think we can win this, uh, bring this one down to shout outs. I mean, uh, we're making good timing here. Could I add one more thing? Go ahead. If you would like to organize a class, I would be happy to travel to you and put on a class. Just 
send me a message on Facebook or email me at 180 firearms training at gmail.com. There you go. That's how I usually set up my things. I usually do the hosting, I usually get them down there, I usually get some type of compensation or discount for doing that. But hey, yes, it I, on need, the I need organizers to volunteer. There, <laughs> there you go. So that's a good way to do it. You got a group of uh, 10 buddies or whatever that all want to take a class, be the organizer. And you get some probably discount or whatever on the on the entry fees to the class. So that's a good way to kind of set it up if you have enough friends or if you're good with all the local guys and they want to take the class, good way to do that. Uh, shout outs. Uh, Jen, what do you have? <clears throat> all right. Uh, Prime Ammunition for awesome ammo. Check them out. Uh, Lansing Tactical for awesome rifles. Um, all their gas guns are amazing. Night Force Optics, Sharpshooters of Augusta and Shooters of Augusta, Carbon Arms, and Grizzly Targets. Oh, there you go. Keita, what do you have on shoutouts? Shoutouts? Oh, I'd like to thank Magna Sports for uh, bringing me to Asia. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. And uh, JJ for doing my trigger job. JJ Ricasa. And uh, arms score for giving me ammo. JJ Ricasa, <laughs> never heard of. Never heard of. Him. <laughs> yeah. Who, wait, who's she? Yeah, right. It's been on the show. We love times. you, JJ. Yeah, excellent. I still I forgot to go to a shop over in Vegas when we were in Chacho. I, I ran into that. him. Um, like he was like two booths over, and he was like, <gasps> I was like, oh, I gotta go speak to <laughs> JJ. He's so funny. Yeah, I've really been meaning. So enthusiastic. And then by the time I got over there to try and go give him a hug and say, hey, there were like 15 people trying to speak to him. It was really funny. I was like, hey, I'll just say hey real quick and I'll get out of here. <laughs> right on. Any, any, any more shout outs, Keita? I think I cut you off there. Oh, yeah. Arm score. Thank you again for the ammo in the Philippines. It worked for all 36 stages in my TANFO. I know it's meant to run into TANFOs, so I was very happy with it. Not one single malfunction. There we go. Uh, shout outs on my end. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, definitely subscribe to the channel. Every Tuesday at 9, we're doing a new episode of the Shooter's Mindset. I've been putting out a lot of uh, SHOT Show videos, usually about one a day. I might start speeding those up and putting two a day because there's a ton of a ton of videos that I still got out. We have uh, the Grunt Style video that's going to go live on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. But uh, definitely subscribe so you can be in tune with all the future episodes. The folks over at Tactical Shift for their support over the years. We appreciate them. Uh, if you want to email me, theshootersmindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Folks over at Tandem Cross, I'm shooting for them this 2018 season. Might be doing a little bit more steel challenge stuff because of that. Uh, definitely thanks to Kita for spending some time with us here on the Shooters Mindset episode 208. We appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Uh, folks over at Gear Nation USA, Rise Armament for your AR stuff and triggers. Uh, the folks over at Rand CLP and Terran Tactical Innovations, we'll kind of wrap it up with that. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode 208 of the Shooter's Mindset. We're out of here. Have a good night.